So it's always fun to revisit these rookies once you have a little more context, right? Uh, at first, we had no clue about what the Cowboys were going to do in terms of, like, defense or whatever. But the more information we get in training camp, the more context we get, right? Uh, Neville Gallimore is number 90. He's going to be all up and down this this uh, D-line. So just try y'all best to, you know, follow my mouse here. This isn't really a uh, a film session. It's just more so film in the background while I just explain my thoughts about Neville Gallimore. But I will try to identify him, right? And, and to be fair, he's either going to be in A-gap, head up, or in B-gap. So uh, right now, he's in A-gap. Now, when I first watched Neville Gallimore, Neville Gallimore is a guy that seems, you know, like he would fit last year's defense perfectly. You know, just a guy that's going to uh, get upfield, penetrate, bust a lot of ass quickly, um, and, you know, just kind of be a guy like that, right? Just more sort of a pass-rushing type three tech. Well, um, there's been some new developments that have come out in training camp. And to be fair, if you're going to uh, switch to a front, um, you know, that we've been practicing and, you know, of course, D-line technique is going to be looking different. Let me just pause this right here. I think this would be a great time to kind of talk about this. Um, so what's going to happen with the Cowboys? This is really not a great formation to talk about it. But what's really going to happen with the Cowboys is that your defensive ends are now going to be your penetration guys, right? Once upon a time last year, like all four guys just kind of penetrated. One take, three take, both ends just kind of, they want, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, Papa Rod Marinelli just wanted to get those guys upfield in a hurry. We're not doing much of that this year. Our defensive ends are the ones that's going to be doing most of the penetrating, but the defensive tackles, the A-gap players, the B-gap guys, they're going to be the ones that are going to be doing more of a two-gap, right? But not necessarily two-gap. It's just that they're going to be more stout versus the run to hold the line of scrimmage. To where back in the old days, Marinelliville would want us to shoot upfield, get to about this line here, and then chase the ball carrier. Now we want the defensive ends to get to about this line here. We want those guys to shoot upfield, kind of, sort of, to get to at least the heels of the O-line, right? But we want these interior dudes to punch these guys in the chest and maintain the line of scrimmage. So personnel is even going to look different at some point. Once we start drafting the way that we're playing or whatever, or drafting – to cater towards the, you know, fronts and schemes that we're doing, then we're going to, um, you know, be drafting to, you know, kind of, you know, go into that way of playing or whatnot. But as of now, we're just playing with the guys that we have. But like I said, Galmore is a guy that's going to shoot a field. So what's Galmore going to have to learn how to do? Galmore is going to have to learn how to shoot his hands, extend and read people, right? Uh, and not really shoot up field as much now. Now, and now, now, can that prove to be bad for Galmore? Absolutely, man, because Galmore is a penetrating player. Um, but he's going to go in this scheme to where he's not really asked to penetrate very much on first and second downs. He's going to be asked to do the very opposite of that. Now, is Dontario Poe really good at that? Sure. Is Tyrone Crawford a gangster at that? Absolutely. 100 percent, Mr. Wolf. Um, and it seems like, you know, some of the notes that's been coming out in training camp is that Tristan Hill seems to be one of those dudes that, that have that have picked up two gapping really well. And if anything, Tristan Hill was kind of like Neville Gallimore, just a guy that gets up field and penetrates really well. He's at zero right here. Um, just a guy that, that, that just penetrates really well. Like this can't cut it. Like this in our new scheme is not going to cut it. Now if a guy more lined up on your center, this ain't going to cut it right here. Just coming up field, moving around, kind of getting washed. And to be fair, a lot of this is, is, is coaching from Oklahoma. It's just the kind of scheme that they do is weird, but we're not going to be asking to do all that movement to run guys down gaps, run, run guys down the line of scrimmage. You're going to be stout. You're going to have to punch. You're going to have to read the ball, carry and shed blocks. Um, that's something that the Cowboys have not done at first. Um, but it's just, you know, just kind of is what it is, though, right? So Gerald McCoy is going to be gone. And to be fair, he was a guy that was pretty solid at, you know, you know, punching and shedding guys, right? Like Gerald, Gerald was really good at it. I think Tyrone Crawford is better at it. So um, in terms of stopping the run, we will be a little better in that. But since Gerald's not here, we're going to have – you know, Tristan Hill and Neville Galmore is going to have to fight a little more for us. And it's, and you know, it, it's, it's, it's kind of a good thing that we have Tyrone Crawford because we don't have to lean on Tristan or we don't have to lean on Neville Galmore. We could just kind of raise those guys as they may. And, you know, Tyrone Crawford is the guy that we lean on. You know what I'm saying? But Neville Galmore and Tristan Hill are going to have to develop. Now, if y'all going to be fair, y'all need to hate 
Neville Gallimore just as much as y'all hate Tristan Hill. Tristan Hill, y'all said he sucked because he didn't come out and play last year. I don't think Neville Gallimore is going to play too, 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 too much this year. I think he's going to have to sit down and develop into his NFL man body and actually learn how to how to two gap people. According to you know, according to uh, you know, what I'm saying to the I am Legend monsters, then 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 they probably going to say Neville Gallimore sucked unless they have just some anti Tristan Hill bias we don't know about. But yeah, Neville's probably going to have to sit this thing out. But Tristan Hill's probably probably going to be first rotation dude um, behind Tyrone Crawford. And, you know, that just that just kind of makes, you know, just makes a little sense, man. Tristan Hill is going to be in his second year. Uh, Neville Gowan taking a long-ass break right now. All right, cool. Um, Tristan Hill is uh, going to be in his second year. He's had an offseason. He showed up in better shape than Leo Collins. Ooh. He showed up in better shape than Leo Collins. So, I mean, that's a real-life conversation that we got to have with that as well. Um, but, hey, man, you know, Tristan Tristan has been impressing in camp. Tristan has shown up to this training staff – not training staff, this coaching staff that has nothing invested in him, right? This ain't like he showed up to the Garrett administration coaches and he's showing that he's improved to those guys. Now, nah, Tristan Hill was one of those guys that was on the bubble because he had no association with the – with this administration, with the Mike McCarthy administration, right? But now he gets to come out and just show what he can do to those guys, you know, I, I, and, 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 and for them to have glowing reviews on him, for them to, you know, accept Tristan Hill as a, you know, as a guy that's, that's probably going to be a part of this thing, that's good for Tristan Hill. Neville Gallimore got a long way to go. Maybe not as, you know, as, as super long, but, hey, man, we just got to be aware that when we have these, these D linemen, you know, unless they first round guys, we just can't assume that they just going to come on the field year one and just play. That's not going to be the case. Um, but anyway, man, I'll just I'll just keep my eyes open for news, man. Well, we ain't getting no damn video. So I guess keep my ears open and read them tweets, I guess. Um, I'll be I'll be looking out for the information or whatnot so we can, um, you know, so we can we can be on on task with everything. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just to, you know, constantly have our updates. What's really going to be telling is the is the. Um, the uh blue and white game right blue and blue and white game is going to be sunday and you know boy if y'all thought Vach was going to break down some film man but, but, but look to be fair though i'm prepared to be let down because i don't think that they're going to show a whole bunch of film i don't think that that they're going to give us anything to break down i don't think we're we're actually going to get real film until week one until september 13th and that's just going to crush my little heart but it is what it is, man. When it is time to break down that film, you know I will be all over the coverage. And, of course, after the games, we got the best post-game show right here on this channel. So, y'all be sure to tune into that. Like this video, subscribe, and all that. Let me know what you think about uh, young Neville Galmore and, you know, Tristan Hill's improvement. And y'all hate on Tyrone Crawford in the chat box if you want to. You know, <laughs> I'm going to allow it this one time just to get comments for the algorithm. All right? Y'all hold it down for the Doski, Woski, and the Peace, Ski, Weeski, man. Till next time.